Hi, my name is Charles, and welcome to part six of the OpenSCAD video series. In this part, we're going to talk about translation and rotation of objects in 3D space and their order, uh, how to apply operations in, an, in a specific order to get the transformation that you want. Okay, so to begin, we first need an object to perform our translations on. So we'll just create a cube. Uh, we'll say the size is 10 and the center is true. Hit F5 to preview that. And as you can see, we have our cube here. So now maybe we want uh, one of the edges aligned with one of our axes. So let's start with a rotation. So Open ASCAD works in degrees and not in radians or gradients or anything else. Um, just degrees keeps it pretty simple. Um, so the command for rotation is pretty simple. It's just rotate. And then you need a pair of parentheses. And then inside those parentheses, you need square braces. And something that I like to do is just preset all the values with zero. And what this does is it essentially says there's a rotation of zero in every axis. I'm going to explain about that in a second. But basically, if you hit F5 now, nothing happens. So that's convenient. So you can just go in and change values, but your code is already there. So um, uh, something familiar to something that we've seen before, uh, perhaps in a cube, is that we have this vector with three inputs. So we have an X, a Y, and a Z a, as, as before. So we know that in some way, the first coordinate corresponds to X somehow, the second corresponds to Y somehow, and the third corresponds to Z somehow. And I'm going to explain how it does that. So essentially, uh, each entry is the number of degrees that you rotate around a given axis. So if we want to rotate um, our object around the vertical axis, we change the number in for Z. So say we want, as we said before, one of the edges to line up with this, with the um, with an axis, then we'll put in 45 degrees and that will bring the edge to the axis. So we'll preview that. And as you can see, our cube has been rotated. Uh, maybe that's what we want, maybe it's not what we want. And so we can change it. And you can put in a whole bunch of other things, whatever you need, um, and just play with that. That's really useful. So uh, we'll take it back to as it was before and it's just how it was and maybe we want to rotate in different uh, directions so say we want to rotate around the x-axis then we we find the x-coordinate which is the first coordinate or the first specification of degrees and we change that we'll do what we did before just 45 degrees hit f5 and that will rotate it along the x-axis. Um, yeah. So if we start small, you can see, if we start at the beginning, we can gradually see it's not doing much, but uh, as we slowly increase, we can see which direction it's rotating in. So it's slowly, if we look straight on from the positive side of the axis, we can see it's going in a counterclockwise direction. Um, and we'll take that back and we can see for the Y, it's pretty similar. We can rotate it around the Y axis. We look from the positive direction. can see that it's going counterclockwise as well if we're looking from the positive direction 
of the y. As you can see, the green part is the positive portion and the back part is the negative portion. And we're going to talk about that a little bit because we're going to be translating and moving them around in just a second. So that's rotation. Um, something important to note with these transformations is more than one can be applied. So say I've rotated around the z-axis, around the vertical axis, 45 degrees. And maybe I want another rotation now, because that could happen a lot. You want uh, two separate rotations, depending on what you're doing. Uh, now, maybe you want it uh, in the x around the x-axis, and that's tempting to do. Um, but it might not quite give you what you want. As you can see, it's kind of slanted. So um, there's actually an order to the operations. There's an order to the rotations. And when you use them inside a single rotate command, uh, I'm pretty sure it goes from left to right. So it's going to rotate 20 degrees in the X, and then 0 degrees in the Y, and then 45 in the Z. And that's not necessarily what you want. So the way to get around this, if we want to rotate 45 in the Z first, is we just add another rotate command. And so maybe we now want uh, 10 degrees around the x axis. So we put 10 degrees, and that will give us more of the rotation that we want. And it's important to note the order. So if you're rotating an object, uh, or translating, and you have transformations applied to your object, the, uh, the transformation closest to your object is the first one that happens. So we know that the first rotation, we have two rotations here, and the first one that's going to happen is the one about the z-axis. That's 45 degrees. So if we know this rotation is closer in the code to our object, uh, I mean, just in terms of lines and stuff, not in any mathematical sense, just this line is only one line away from this line. Uh, this line is one line away from our cube, and this line is two lines away, or this one comes after this one. This means that this rotation will happen first. Um, and that's how we control... Uh, our order of operations and which operation we want to happen first. As, and I'll show you that it can make a, a big difference depending on what you're doing. So say 10, and we can see that we have more or less what we want. Um, so that's more or less it for rotation for now. There's a little bit more complicated rotation uh, around a vector, but we're not going to not going to discuss that right now because it's a little bit beyond what we want to do just for this introduction part. Uh, we're going to talk about translations now. So we're going to multi-line comment this. And our cube disappears. So Uh, the next thing we want to do is learn translation. So our cube appears here again, but now it's just stuck to the origin. That's not super helpful to us. So we probably want it somewhere else, somewhere out in 3D space around. So how we do this is the translate operator. So it's just translate. And parentheses and uh, square brackets. And if you notice, uh, after these operations, the rotations and the translations, there's no semicolon. The semicolons only come after the objects. Um, that's mostly it. And we're going to talk about variables and syntax of those, but don't worry about those for now. We're going to talk about them later. So uh, we have our translation, and as you may have guessed already, we have this vector with three inputs. One, two, three, and um, we want to move it, our cube, in some direction. So 
we know that the first one corresponds to the x, the second one corresponds to the y, and the third one corresponds to the z. So if we if we want to move in the x, we can see that this axis is the x-axis, and we want to move it to the right somewhere over here. That means we need a positive value for the x. Right now, it's zero, so it's not going anywhere, but maybe we want to move it over a bunch. So we'll say 30. Uh, we want to move our cube over 30 units in the positive x direction, and we'll press F5, and our cube has moved. And if you remember from before, you can right click and drag your crosshairs to have a better look at things that are around in 3D space at different points. So we can see our cube has been moved over. Um, and so that's great. That's, that's essentially the basis of all of it. Uh, this, for this, you don't have to worry about order too much because it doesn't matter um, where you travel to first. Maybe say you wanted to travel 30 units in one direction and then 20 units in another. It doesn't really matter because you can take either path. You can travel the 30 units first or the 20 units first and you'll end up in the same place. That's a wonderful thing about geometry because they're all, all these are um, 90 degrees from each other. So, if you notice what I did there, I just I added another value for um, for the y. So we see it moved up in the y direction. It moved up in the positive y, and let's say we want to move it 50 in the z direction, in the positive z direction. So now our cube is somewhere floating in 3D space, uh, and it we know because the center was true that its center is at the coordinates 30, 20, 50, which means 30 in the x, 20 in the y, and 50 in the z direction. So we can take this back to zero now, change it back to zero, and that puts it back on the origin. So now that's how to go in the positive direction. It's really easy to go in the negative direction. You just say negative, you put a minus symbol before whatever number you put in, and you put 50, 100, whatever you need. Um, and that makes you go negative. You can also um, specify uh, numbers. Uh, you can add numbers or divide numbers or subtract numbers. So you can say maybe 10 minus 6. Uh, we know that's going to be 4, but maybe you don't know exactly, maybe you have to add in some other functions. So we can see that it was translated for maybe minus five. And we know that it's now on the edge. A useful trick, especially for translating cubes that you'll probably want to do a lot. Um, if you end up working with open ASCAD, is that you can take a look at the size of the cube. And notice that the side lengths are 10. So if we want the bottom of our cube um, on the origin uh, and coplanar with the xy plane, then we say we know the size is 10. So we can put 10 and then divide by 2. And we know that's going to be 5, but again, we don't always know because we might be changing. So you can put in. Um, formulas for different numbers. And as we can see, that puts the bottom of our cube on the xy plane. So we can do this with any other uh, any other direction because we know that the sides of the cube are all the same length. So we can say 10 over 2. And that puts it uh, on the xz plane. We could say negative 10 over 2. Again, puts a different side on the xz plane. Um, there are different methods for this. Uh, this is a pretty simple way, depending on what you're going for. This might put the cube in the orientation that you need, or the rectangular prism, depending on what you're working with. Um, 
and yeah, that's how you that's how you move around objects. This is more or less universal for most objects uh, in OpenSCAD. As long as it's a 3D object, you can move it around using the translate operator. So um, now that we've done this, uh, we're gonna do uh, something else. I'm gonna do an, a bit of an example just to show um, uh, what, how to translate and rotate at the same time. So we create our cube, size equals 10. So let's say we want, we want to bring our cube out 100 units and we want to rotate it to 45 degrees. So this is going to illustrate the importance of order. So the first thing that we have to do is translate our cube. And we know, um, let's change it just so that it's, it's in the X direction. So we know that we want to move 100 in the positive X direction. So we say 100. And that puts the center of our cube um, on, on the positive X direction. On the positive X axis, uh, 100 units in the positive X direction. Now we want to rotate it up somewhere in this space, 45 degrees. So now we say rotate. And we're going to say 45 degrees um, about the Z axis. So the Z axis we know is this one. So we're going to be rotating around it. Uh, so it should put our cube right here. And it does. So that's how you do a rotation. Now, the reason the order is important is because if we rotated our cube first, we would end up with something that's not quite what we're going for. Uh, it's translated and it's rotated, but the rotation happens first. So we can see basically what happened here is that we rotated our cube. It was at the origin. We rotated it and then we translated it. For example, it was at the origin and we can see it's been rotated and then we translated it as opposed to being translated and then rotated. So it can be a bit of a subtle difference sometimes, but it's really important to get the shapes that you're going after that you want uh, to define your model correctly. Okay, that's mostly it for, for this video. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.